Good morning everyone. Today we will discuss about the last division of the plant kingdom that is angiosperms. The angiosperms are also known as flowering plants. Definitely they are the plants having the seeds but the flowers they are also present and that's why the angiospermic plants they are also known as flowering plants and here in this case in all the members of angiosperms the seeds are enclosed by a covering or you can say the seeds they are not naked the seeds are present inside the fruits yesterday we have already discussed about the characteristics of the gymnosperm in the gymnosperms as i taught you the seeds are present but the seeds they are naked they don't have the fruits in the case of gymnosperm but in all the angiospermic plants the fruits are present and the seeds they are present inside the fruit in the case of gymnosperm as i told you that flowers are absent in the place of the flowers the cones they are present but here in angiospermic plants you will observe flowers so in all the angiosperm plants the flowers are present all the plants like mustard mango rose nowadays are in the present era the angiosperm plants they are dominant and nearly 2 lakhs 50000 species are found which belong to the angiosperm plants so it's a wide range of the plants they are included into the angiosperm plant the majority of the plants which you can observe into the nearby places in your localities they all belong from the angiosperm plants wherever you can observe the flowers in any plant you will get to know that the plant belongs to the angiosperm all the grasses even all the herbs shrub rose other plants all the flowering plants the flowers bearing the plants either petunia lily marigold all these plants those who are having the flowers they are included into the angiosperm plant so the angiosperm plants they are the seed bearing plants or they are also known as flowering plants and the seeds they are present where inside the fruits the angiosperm plants they were evolved around 130 to 160 million years ago they evolved after the gymnosperm first algae then bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperm so the angiosperms they are the modern plants in the present era the angiosperm plants they are dominating plants means their numbers are too much as i told you nearly 2 lakhs 50000 species are found of the angiosperms now regarding the habitat habitat means where the angiosperm plants they live the angiosperm plants they are adopted into a variety of habitat they are present definitely on the land in the terrestrial habitat some of the angiosperms they are aquatic they are found into the aquatic environment 
Even the angiosperms, they are also found into very hot climatic condition into the desert area. Some of the plants like cactus, you can observe the cactus, they are mainly found into the desert areas. Even some of the flowering plants or you can say the angiosperm plants, they are adopted to grow into the alpine zone, in tundra, in Antarctica, even into the hot spring also, means you can't imagine everywhere, simply you can say the plants, they are adopted to grow in all the environmental conditions, they are present everywhere, water, land, even in the land also into the very hot climatic condition into the desert area into the alpine zone, tundra zone, Antarctic, so many plants they are found. They are also present in the high altitude of the Himalayas, so many species of the angiosperms. They are also adopted to grow in a very cold climatic conditions. Now, <coughs> regarding the plant body, how the angiospermic plants they look? The angiospermic plants, their body ranges from herbs, they may be shrub or the tree. As you know, herbs, they are very small plant, all the grasses, they are included into the herbs, they are herbs. The medium sized plant like rose, other flower yielding plants, which are grow generally in your garden. They are the medium sized plant. They are the shrub and definitely the tree, the tall plants, definitely they are called tree. Like eucalyptus, mango, neem. So many plants, they are uh, the tree and they are height is too much. So the plants may be herbaceous, may be herbs, may be shrub or may be tree. The body of the angiospermic plants, they may be very small. Some of the angiosperms, they are very small. Some of the aquatic plants like hydrilla, acornia, they are very small, especially hydrilla, jostera, ceratophyllum, so many aquatic plants. They are small in the structure. The smallest angiosperm is ulfia. This is the smallest angiosperm and the tallest angiosperm is eucalyptus. The height of the eucalyptus, some of the species of the eucalyptus the height goes nearly 100 meter and above also. Now regarding the flowers, the uh, as you know the flower, before the flower, the plant body, let me to define the main plant body of the angiosperm age is sporophytic like the gymnosperm like the pteridophytes here also the main plant body age is sporophytic means whenever you will observe a single cell the chromosomes they are found into the pair and they are deployed in nature and because of the deployed condition the plant is said to be what is sporophytic Plant. So the main plant body is what is sporophytic and this is sporophytic plant of the angiosperm is well defined into the roots, stem and leaves. Any plant of the angiosperm whether it is grass, um, belongs to the grasses, herbs or the shrub or the tree, you can observe the plant is well developed and it well differentiated into the roots, 
stem and leaves the roots may be adventitious roots or maybe the tap root as you know the tap root it is the main root and from the main root so many branches they emerge they come outside the adventitious roots they may be arise from any other places but overall the tap root and adventitious root all the kinds of the roots we will study into the morphology of the flowering plants in detail as per the stem is concerned the stem may be very soft like in the case of herbs the stem is soft the stem is not woody the stems don't have the secondary xylem it is very soft in the shrub like in the case of rose in other tall tree plant like mango neem and other plants the stem is very hard the stem has the secondary xylem it is woody and the it is very hard which supports the apical part the branches of the tree as per the leaves are concerned the leaves may be simple the leaf may be simple or may be compound here i am not going to explain that what is simple leaf what is compound leaf you will do the experiment i will teach you in the next chapter regarding the types of the root types of the stem regarding the leaves comp simple leaves compound leaves all the morphology as well as the anatomy you have to study later on in the uh, chapters now the flowers in angiosperm plant the flower is the reproductive organ it's very very important as i told you in the gymnospermic plant the cones are the reproductive organs the male cone and female cones they produce the gametes they help in the process of fertilization in the process of zygote formation but in angiospermic plant the flower is said to be what a reproductive organ in class 10th just you can recall in class 10th you have already gone through the flower the parts of the flower as you know each flower has four whorls calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium the calyx is made up of the sepals the corolla the second whorl is made up of the petals androecium is made up of the stamens the gynoecium made up of the carpels means a single flower a complete flower has how many whorls four whorls are to be there simply you can say the flower consist of the sepals petals stamens carpels all these all are the parts of a typical flower and you know the sepals and petals they are colored and because of the different colors the petals they attract the insect which helps in the process of pollination the sepals they are mainly responsible for the protection of the flower in the bud condition but the third and fourth the third part that is the stamen the stamen is the male reproductive organ i have drawn here the diagram this is a typical flower this is sporophytic plant of the angiosperm and this is the stamen the stamen is known as the male reproductive organ of an angiospermic plant each stamen is consist of how many parts two parts this stalk like structure is called filament and this apical part this is known as anther as you know anther is also bilobed these two parts are there of the anther but at this level just 
you have to consider it. two parts are there filament and anther the anther is the part of the stamen which produces what pollen grains or you can say microspores if you will cut the section of the anther and you will observe under the microscope in the mature anther in their tears you can observe so many cells a sac like structure that is called microsporangium you have to study in detail in class 12 if you will cut the transfer section of a mature anther and you will observe under the microscope you can observe in each anther four sacs are to be there these are called pollen sacs or you can say microsporangium and all the microsporangium the four microsporangium they are filled with the microspores or pollen grains so overall the anther is the part of the stamen which produces what pollen grains and all these pollen grains they are produced by the cells which are present inside the microsporangium these cells are called microspore mother cells the microspore mother cells they are deployed in nature each micro spore mother cell undergoes into the meiosis division to form four microspores suppose in an anther in a particular anther 100 microspore mother cells are there and if each microspore mother cell undergoes into the meiosis division it produces four pollen grains so from 100 microspore mother cells nearly 400 microspores or pollen grains will be produced i will teach this topic that how many pollen grains they will produce in class 12 but at this level in class 11 just you can make your concept that the anther produces pollen grains or microspores the same like if the flower is bisexual the same flower contains stamen and carpel both and if the flower is unisexual either the flower will have the male or the female sex organ but not both but the carpel the fourth horn if the flower is complete the carpel is the female reproductive organ the carpel is also known as pistil each carpel has how many parts stigma this long tubular structure is called style and this basal swollen part this is called ovary so each carpel or pistil has three parts stigma style and ovary inside the ovary you can see here there is a structure and that is called ovule as you know after fertilization ovary is converted into the fruit the ovule is converted into the seed and remaining part of the flower they fall down they set off and later on after the fertilization in the place of the flower you can observe the fruit containing the seed and if you will grow the seed into the soil the seed is further broken down the seed coat is being removed and the embryo develops into the new plant so the carpel is the female reproductive organ each carpel consists of the stigma style the ovary ovary containing here the ovule here i have taken one ovule this is the ovule inside the ovule also there is a structure and that is called embryo sac or you can say the female gametophyte as you know the embryo sac has seven cells and eight nucleus the seven cells the upper three cells they are called antipodans the central cell that is called the central cell that is called central cell and 
This apical cell is called egg apparatus. It is made up of egg and both neighboring cells, they are called synergies. So inside the embryo sac, embryo sac is the female gametophyte. And inside the embryo sac, egg is present. Here, during the pollen grain, during the process of pollination, as you know, pollination is the process of the transfer of the pollen grains. When the pollen grains, they are transferred from the anther to the stigma, the pollen grain germinates and when the pollen grain germinates, it forms the pollen tube. This whole structure is now called the male gametophyte. The pollen grain is the first cell of the male gametophyte and it is haploid. Later on, the pollen grain, it produces how many male gametes? Two male gametes. And you know, out of two male gametes, one male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote. And the another male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus, which are present inside the central cell to form endosperm. In class 10, we have already discussed. So, how many male gametes they are produced from the pollen grain? Two male gametes. And out of these two male gametes, one male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote, and zygote develops into the embryo and embryo gives rise to the new plant the another male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus to form triploid nucleus this is called triple fusion and as you know the syngamy and triple fusion both they are collectively called double fertilization and it is very very important that the process of double fertilization takes place in angiospermic plants only, not in the gymnosperm. The double fertilization is the unique feature of all the angiospermic plants. And the process of double fertilization was given by S.C. Navaschen. As you know, in the double fertilization, along with the zygote formation, endosperm is also produced and endosperm is the nutritive tissue which gives the food material to the developing embryo. If the process of double fertilization will not take place, there will be no formation of endosperm and the zygote or you can say will not develop into the embryo, embryo will not get the proper food. And that's why the new plant will be not produced here. So, uh, you can see the zygote. Zygote then it forms the embryo. As you know, embryo is also made up of the two cotyledons. In the case of dicard plant, two cotyledons are there. The radical and plumules, both they are present inside the embryo. The radical gives rise to the embryo is the part of the seed which gives rise to the new plant, especially the radical, it gives rise to the root and plumule, it gives rise to the suit system. And cotyledons contain the food which helps for the successful germination of the seed. Once the leaves they are going to be produced, Again, the cotyledons also they get disappear. The classification of angiosperm. As you know, the angiosperm in class 9th, the topic is included that the angiosperm or the flowering plant is divided into the two groups, monocots and dicots. The monocot plants they include especially the grasses, the cereals like wheat, rice, maize. These plants are monocot plants. All the grasses also. And dicot plants like 
the gram, pea, other tree plants, all they are dicot plants. What is monocot plant? In monocot, mono means single, cot means cotyledon. In all the monocot plants, a single cotyledon is present. But in dicot plants, how many cotyledons are there? Two cotyledons. Cotyledons are the part of embryo present inside the seed. So in all the monocot plant, a single cotyledon is present while in the case of dicot plants, two cotyledons are present. Other differences are also there. You can also observe experimentally also. And with the help of the experiment, you will get to know that whether the plant is monocot or dicot, not only on the basis of the cotyledons. Definitely the names are given on the basis of the cotyledons, monocot and dicot. But other differences are also there. Like in the case of monocot, the leaf has parallel venison. The venison is just like this. Parallel venison. But in dicot plant, there is a midrib. And from the midrib, so many vascular systems, they are a rise, xylem and phloem. So the venison is reticulate. In the case of dicot. In monocot plant, the stomata mainly they are present on the lower epidermis, not on the upper epidermis. The leaves they are dorsiventral, means it has two surfaces, dorsal and ventral surface. The upper epidermis and lower epidermis. And stomata they are present on the lower epidermis. But the leaf of the monocot plant is called isobilateral. Both the surfaces are same. You can't distinguish in the monocot plant that which one is the upper part, which one is the lower part. And stomata, they are present on both of the surfaces equally on upper as well as on the lower. In dicot plant, the stomata they are kidney shaped in structure. The structure of the stomata it looks kidney shaped in structure, but in monocot plant it is dumbbell shaped in structure. Dumbbell shaped. In monocot plants, if you will observe the roots, the roots they are fibrous, adventitious, mainly. But here in dicot plant, the tap root system is found. In the monocot plant, in the few plants, there is the exception, but the secondary growth didn't take place. But here, secondary growth takes place. I will teach you about the secondary growth in class 11th in some other chapter. So, so many differences are there in monocot and dicot plants. Some other features of the angiosperm plant. The angiosperm plant, they are also, uh, the angiosperm plants, they are widely used. They have a great economic importance. They are used as a food, fodder for fibers, for the medicinal purpose, for getting so many other products, means the plants, they are also used for the ornamental purpose. So the plants, they are having too much usage that they are used for the food, for the fodder, to obtain rubber, resins, gums, medicines. They are used for the decorative, uh, as a decorative plants for ornamental use, you can say. So they have a great economic importance also. So that's all. Actually in this chapter, the characteristics are important and 
यू आर सपोज टू मेक द फीचर्स ऑफ एनजीओ स्पर्मिक प्लांट आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉट एलगी ब्रायोफाइट्स टेरिडोफाइट्स जिम्नोस्पर्म्स एनजीओ स्पर्म्स नाउ योर वर्क is there to write the features and also you read in such a way that you can compare you can differentiate in between all these groups of the plant so once again three to four main characteristic features are there let me to define about the angiosperm which makes the angiosperm different from the gymnosperms Then, what are the similarities? First of all, in gymnosperm and angiosperm, both they look alike. In gymnosperm and angiosperm, in both of the cases, the seeds are present. But in gymnosperm, the seeds are naked, and in angiosperm, the seeds they are not naked; they are present inside the fruits. In gymnosperm. the flowers are absent but in angiosperm flowers are present in gymnosperm as i told you in the place of the flowers the cones they are present and here also i explained about the life cycle like stamen carpels such type of structures they are absent in the gymnosperm so you please try to differentiate among all these groups and make the proper notes so that's all for today tomorrow i will teach you the last topic maybe the haplontic diplontic and haplodiplontic life cycle then i will start the next chapter so that's all for today thanks thanks everyone